as far as non-surgical treatments, um, this is kind of a classic um, uh, hard collar, a cervical uh, orthosis um, that, could, that can be used. Um, a CTO, a cervical thoracic orthosis, a um, little more stable to, at the base. The, the classic cervical ones can certainly snake, right? They're, they're not fixed and rigid. So patients can still move around in there. Um, and, and these are okay for mid cervical, upper cervical, lower cervical, not so great. Um, and this still has the same issue with upper cervical, but better for mid cervical and then lower cervical at the cervical thoracic junction, because as you can imagine, wearing that sort of vest deal um, immobilizes even better. And then the best stability is the halo, but these things are tough and tricky. Um, they're great for high cervical C1, C2 uh, kinds of fractures, but the rest of the spine kind of snakes. Um, and if you have patients that have polytrauma, that have chest trauma, lung contusions, uh, these can sometimes be problematic, but sometimes it's the only thing you have. Um, for young people, a little bit of a torture device, but it can preserve motion. Um, and so if you've got an amenable fracture, um, like a, a dense fracture that's well aligned and has a good chance of fusing in a relatively young person, this obviously isn't, isn't great for your social life, but uh, at the same time, um, it allows you to potentially move your neck later on. Um, and of course you have to um, bring them back in and, and assess uh, how they're fusing as, as time goes. For older folks, and by older, I mean 55, 60, um, it can quite literally be a coffin. Um, data has shown that folks don't do very well uh, older folks don't do very well in these. Um, they tend to languish uh, and also they tend not to fuse very well. Uh, so there is an upper age limit on, on halo. Um, there, there are places who don't use them at all, um, but we, we use a fair number at, at trauma um, because we do have a fair number of, of younger uh, types of patients as well as the older patients. And so Surgical management, are you going to do closed cervical traction, anterior, posterior, both? Um, all these questions. And this is just a patient um, face protected that was in cervical traction. This is in um, the trauma resuscitation area. You can kind of see the general uh, setup um, where there's this um, uh, weights and traction applied to the, to the head. The patient's feet are actually to our right and the head is behind the black box there. Um, and with a C-arm looking at the, the fracture dislocation as you add more weight and then weight. Um, and sometimes you have to gently kind of flex the head and twist to one side if it's a unilateral versus a bilateral uh, fracture dislocation. And if they do reduce by C-arm flography, great. Um, you can reduce the weights to basically just a maintenance weight and then off to the OR uh, to, to fuse. And so um, with closed, although um, this doesn't reproduce very well, but on the left, um, we can see um, that there is a, a, a dislocation um, that's been uh, reduced. We can kind of see the joint jumped up over and on the right that that's uh, been, whoop, there we go, successfully reduced. Um, and so for anterior cervical uh, surgery, generally um, two kinds of flavors, uh, anterior cervical discectomy infusion or corpectomy, uh, if the vertebral body itself is severely fractured or into the canal itself. Posterior cervical surgery, laminectomy infusion, um, occipital and C1, C2 fixation are their own little uh, subspecialties in thoracic. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.